uh, where she's been very active in working for the urban poor rights, especially when it comes to land tenure and informality. Uh, you've also worked with setting up SDI chapters and federations all over the world, uh, both in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Uh, and for that work, you've also been awarded the UN Habitat Scroll, Scroll of Honor oh. in 2005. <laughs> <laughs> so your bio says. Uh, can you tell us a little bit what it is that you do that makes you different and why the voice that you express is so necessary in urban areas? Thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm Rose Morukwale from South Africa. I'm a member of a saving scheme called Okasi Saving Scheme in a province called Northwest in South Africa. I've forgotten about the scroll <laughs> because I, I don't consider it a good award for me. My award is when one person got a piece of land, one person got a house, and one person got encouraged on how to save. That is my award. And I feel proud because when, when I became a member of SDI, I came from a poor family. My father didn't work. The work that he was doing, he couldn't afford to take care of her 10 children, whereby I'm the eighth of the 10, of the 10 children. But I survived to go to school to a certain standard where I can be able to express myself in English. And not that I got the English from school, no. I got the English from SDI. <laughs> because every time when I go for an exchange program, when I get one word that is said by a professional, I take it into my pocket and I use it when I meet with other people as if it was my own word. So that's how I learned how to be part of this big organization. SDI, it's a, it's, a, it's a movement of poor people that have come together and said, by the way, we are very sick and tired of people talking about us and not with us. Maybe it's because we are scattered from our different settlements, our different households and our different communities. And then when SDI came on board, it was when we realized that sometimes we, we, we should not take ourselves for granted. And then we should not take ourselves as subjects for discussion. But we should also think that we are the assets of those who are talking about us. And that is why in 1991, when we started to meet together with the Indians, we, we, as the South Africans, said, oh, this is just a joke, what the Indians are telling us. How can poor people come together? And then how can poor people save money whilst they are poor? Where do they get this money from? Are they stealing or mm -hmm. are they criminals? Then we wanted to learn from them. The first exchange program took place in 1992, when we went to India, to learn on how these poor, uneducated, dirty women sleeping on the street, how can they be able to put money together and knock at the government's door and talk to their own government? It, it was such an interesting uh, experience that we had. But the worst of it was that instead of us starting to learn, we started to cry because we thought South Africa was better than the, the Indians. But actually, the Indians was a university for us. Not the University of India. No, the Pavement Dwellers University. So we went on the street to learn how these women organize themselves, how these women use their money, that little rupee, one rupee, two rupees, five rupees, how they use it as a leverage to attract more resources. That was a very good understanding that we learned as South Africans. For four years, we started to build South African Federation. And in 1996, we came back together with the Indians 
Maybe it was because we wanted to report to them that what we learned from them is bearing fruits. Then we came together and said, but now we can't stop from here, India, South Africa. We have to have an impact around the whole world. Hence, we started to say, what is it that we should build? Oh, poor people, we don't know what's the name that we can call ourselves, because we are South Africa, we are India. But we came with this name, SDI, Sheikh Dwellers International. Actually, it's Sheikh Stroke Slum Dwellers International. We wanted to expand the knowledge that we have. Knowledge of knowing how to save, knowledge of putting women at the center of the process. And then what I liked most is how we were defining the word women. It means what? Huh? Well organized men. <laughs> w stand for well, O stand for organized, and the last three alphabets stand for men. That is why we wanted women to be at the center and the driving force of this organization. Hence, in the federation, we just brought this one man, and then all of us we are stronger than the man. So, not only savings that made us to be more stronger, not only women that made us to become the real SDI, it's the agenda that we drafted for ourselves. Because we said, we can't just save without a purpose. And let's talk about ourselves. That's why we said, first thing, we are very poor. We should take ourselves out of poverty. Secondly, we don't have homes. We have to know how to build our own homes. But where can we build our homes if we don't have land? Then that was the, the, the third issue on the agenda. How are we going to acquire land? My colleagues are going to explain how we did acquire land, how we built our houses, how we got land for the people, how we tried to address the issue of poverty that was striking our communities. I like the women of India because they didn't know how to speak English when we start to meet each other. And they forced me to go with them into the community to go and collect daily saving. You can imagine, I have to speak, what is it, Hindi or Marathi. Hindi, Marathi, with that woman who doesn't know. Then I said, I remember one day when I was there, they were saying, that this lady was saying, Rosie, now come. One rupee, say win. So I was so confused. But I liked it because it made me to connect with these people. That connection started to grow within me. I was like, I'm an Indian now. Because one, when I talk and act with them, we were like a family. Hence, we expanded. I'm now a Filipino. I'm now a Kenyan. Because of this big movement that has brought us together. It was not because of money that we say we want money. No, we wanted our voice to be heard. We wanted to be understood. We wanted to be at the center of the decision making. That is why today SDI is so big. People are talking about us. Initially they were talking about individual communities. But today they are talking about SDI. It is not because of, of the word SDI that is interesting. It's because of what we are doing at the community level. How we are influencing the policies of our government. How we are doing our own projects that are built in the communities. How we participate somewhere, somehow, when policies are being drafted. How we want to be part of the decision making. We are from the local, from the community level, Actually, we are from the individual like me and with my neighborhood and the community. Then we become at the city level. Then we become at the national level. For now, we are so proud to become at the global level. Today, we are standing here in front of you. I remember our NGOs were saying, oh, this is a waste of time for you poor people to stand in the global platform. Is it not boring for you? He said, yes. It is boring. <laughs> this language is totally technical to us, but we won't stop going there because we want to change the language. 
not the language English, but the concept of how this the big guns are discussing, they have to understand our, our language too. But we, we have done it and then we are proud that SDI today is an organization that is being recognized globally. But it's just a drop in an ocean. How are we connecting each other with the northern communities? CEDA is trying to open the door. We want to get into that door. Northern communities, we want to join hands with you. Because at the end of the day, poverty is one meaning. If the person doesn't have money, doesn't have the right to land, doesn't have the right to housing, can't pay the rent to Sabo, it is Sabo, yes. you, you can't pay rent to Sabo, you, you, you have to run up and down, and evictions are there in many areas. If we don't come together and address those factors, then we are not one united nation. We are the poor. We are hopeless. We are landless. But we are not hopeless. We are the problem and we are the solution. Join hands with us. We will get the good solution to what you want to achieve. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Rose. And I think that's one of the things that are so powerful with SDI, that it's not a project or an organization, really. It's a social movement, and it's a social movement that you can't stop. Because it's not sitting waiting for funding from CEDA. It's something that is mobilizing at the grassroots level because people need it. So it's unstoppable, and it's growing. <laughs>